Hello everybody, it's a new video from Unity Center. Today we are interviewing Maria Uma Almengol. She's from Mexico and is coming to Norway with her experience in sexual trauma and um, what do you call it? Trauma and shock. Shock and trauma. Sexual shock, trauma yes. and healing. Yes. And she has uh, lots of experience, that's why I wanted to interview her. So you can learn a little bit about shock and trauma. Everybody has shock and trauma. And uh, lots of people have trauma from sexual experiences and so on. And that's your expertise. But first I want a little, uh, little bit about your background. You come from Mexico. I come from Mexico indeed. I come from central Mexico, which is a semi-desert region, a very shamanic land. Um, quite spiritual um, and I left uh, 17 years ago I started my travel and I've been living in nine countries nine countries nine countries wow. experiencing and learning but you have a shaman a shamanistic background well I was really in contact with the shamanic land uh, I always kind of rejected that that's not me that's not me and suddenly after all this uh, inner work uh, it comes very much in me, very much alive, mm. and so then it's annoying inside. But uh, since you have expertise in sexual shock and trauma, uh, is it anything from your background, from the childhood experiences that uh, put you into this road? Well, yeah, certainly, certainly. Um, uh, as a psychotherapist, I was trained as a psychotherapist, and uh, you have to do your inner work before you dare to be in front of another person mm -hmm. trying to support. So I did my homework in finding out what was my past. And um, yeah, you go through the waves and the tsunamis to find out your history. And then you honor it. And then I said, OK, what do I do with this? Now that I know what I know about myself in sexual abuse, uh, emotional abuse, uh, physical abuse, so in my process of reconstruction, yeah, you wonder, okay, why, why know all of this now? You know, it's not only for my inner healing and liberation, but it's also the learning that is now behind. And I say, okay, what am I going to do with this information, and how can I bring it back to the world and, yeah. and support people? Yeah, fantastic. Right? But why in nine countries? It's interesting. It was just life, actually. I think. Uh, I, uh, Mexico became quite personal for me. I was very reactive to, start to react very much to authorities and justice, uh, power, power relations. I became at one point extremely feminist and very much in a fight with the world. And that was my first reaction to make myself justice, you know. Mm. And I fight with every, all the institutions and I said, no, I don't fit here. It's becoming too personal. Yeah. And I always wanted to see this liberated women who were in the world, you know, and I said, I want to be one of those women, you know, I want my body to be alive like those bodies. So what is it in them that I don't have in me? And I didn't know anything about that time. So I said, I want to go to university, I want to learn. So my first journey started by learning. So I went to first Australia and then for work and, and living and trying to offer my family. I have two beautiful sons who have put up with my story and my journey. Mm. And uh, so it was, let's get out of Mexico and trying to heal and trying to do something different. And we did. And uh, so my goal was to go to university because I thought learning is empowerment. Mm. And when I went to, through that phase, then I realized, well, yeah, but not everything is in the, in the mind. What about the body? What about the soul? Yes. Uh, and I could not dare, even if I had my psychotherapy studies behind, I said, well, yeah, but I'm not ready to be in front of another human being. There's some work to do. So then I went into a study. Um, I did a Osho therapist training in Denmark that connected to the soul. We did transpersonal work, existential work, and, and then everything started popping up. And then more and more the process unfold. And then, of course, you take responsibility of what's coming next. Mm. So basically, from there, it's like I've been w traveling in different parts of the countries and um, 
so just to find out more about myself. Also because the sense of self changes where you are. And I really want to find out my own identity. Mm. Who am I without my story? Who is who is Uma now? You know, what is yes. what is left or what is the <laughs> beginning? You know? What is left or what is the beginning? Yeah. So so that took me to explore, explore, explore. Uh, making sense of myself, healing at the same time, learning, putting myself in a lot of challenges um, until I got into uh, studying erotology and Tantra, even to understand what is really a limit, what is really a boundary, you know, who is me, who is you, mm. energetically, physically, mentally, in the whole different parts of, of the psychic, uh, and understand relational yeah how can I how can I do it and then then when I learned that it was okay now how am I going to relate to the other without the fear of being hurt again so then I went to do more work and open the heart and trust again because of course we are people who are in love and I am. I, I, I love a lot the people and I love myself very much but I was terrified to connect with people and really showing myself in the my authentic mm. self and I'm like no way I don't do that you yeah. know. People are often scared of that. It's very yeah. scary when you have been hurt before into a very deep deep damage because actually your sexual being is the core. We come from sexual energy. We are a product of love in an act of love and then in life when life hits that is broken and interrupted so it's very hard to reconstruct and yet is the core of the soul is the core of the longing I want to connect with someone in a heart level and in the spiritual level and in the sexual level but the fear is very big but uh, if you um, uh while we're in Tantra, can you explain a little bit about, you talked about uh, when you're small, you you kind of ruined the, um, the sexual energy. Mm. Can you explain a little bit more about that? How does that happen? Well... well one thing is uh, uh, mis misuse, abuse and mm. so on, but uh, normal people can also be hurt by when they're small and totally it's and it's a very fine line because also the memory gets distorted after 72 hours so the story that you think you have it never happened or it's been transformed or but the body remembers so in sexual shock and trauma it's important to recognize different stages or different facts uh, from very mild until very severe depends on the aggression and the transgression in children, for example, the transgression can be just even the intention of an adult in the street looking sexually at this little woman, for example, little girl, for example. Mm -hmm. It can be very traumatic for the girl because this person is really uh, intruding in her energy. And this woman, this little girl, when she's a woman, can feel the threat of someone looking at her that okay. way. And that can be a trauma. That can be a trauma wow. because it's stored in your body, in your energetic body and in your child memory. Sometimes I have, uh, for me even, I remember I was like 10 years old and I was in the bus and there was a man who was uh, touching his genitals and I was totally freaking out. And that put me a lot of fear to go in buses. And that is also a shock and trauma. Mm. So you see, we need to understand that sexual shock and trauma can be in a very different way, in different, different dimensions, but that's why we need to go to the body, read the body, and start mobilizing the energy that is locked in different parts of the body so that you really lose the fear. And one of the things that is important, for example, with the Tantra work is that we, we help each other to up, expand, and contract. Then we read the body. The problem is that we need to be very careful because in so much expansion, we also can get re-traumatization. But if we are doing it careful and with responsible 
in a responsible way, then we understand where we come from. I have a very, uh, I mean, strong, strong feeling that we all have the capacity to love, to have healthy sexual life. We also need the healthy container, the trust in oneself, and the relaxation, the love, right? The right touch, the right environment mm. to support you in open in your sexual flow. So hopefully, that's the aim, and it's a natural given. When you relax, everything is open. The problem is when we have all those ghosts in the head and stored in the body, then we need to do something about it. But it's very frightening to try to acknowledge that. But how, um, how does people, how do they know if they have some mm. kind of shock and trauma? Mm. Most people, they go around and they, mm. they don't know they're, they have a shock or trauma yeah. that, they're, that there is in, inside them and they don't know. Uh, some have, feel they have a problem, don't mm. know what to do about it. But I think most people don't know they have any shock or trauma. Yeah. Yeah, it's well, true. How, it's how, totally true. How, uh, I mean, how do you know you have a chakra? Uh, it's very, it's very tricky. But you know, in the deep down, that something is happening inside when you don't fulfill your intimate relationship. We are relational beings. We look for contact. We look for intimacy. A natural way of relating. Now, there are different clues because if you segregate yourself and you don't connect with people, you are so frightened of making connections. It's just simply basic human connection. Mm. There's something in the background who's really stopping you from approaching you. Well, we need to read the body and see what's happening that I cannot come and approach you naturally. So we look at fears and from those fears we support the body to really come up and say, okay, what is this fear about? Is this really fear because there is a problem in the attachment with parents or there is a developmental phase that is stopping me because I was never out in the streets when I was a kid? Or is it there that I have a fear and a threat that is totally in subconscious? Not in the unconscious, but in the subconscious, which only the reptilian brain can detect that threat. So. In shock and trauma, we look at flight, fight, or freeze response. And we really monitor the body around that, but also we monitor the behavior, we monitor the emotions, we monitor the, I want to fly, I just want to go. Negative thinking. Mm. But when you have a client, uh, are you just asking questions until you find out what's going on, or do mm. you, are you using Using, uh, look at the face and see how they react on things. Do you use uh, kinesiology? Mm. What What do you do? Well, it's interesting uh, because, uh, for example, so some some clients come very uh, clear that they have had shock and trauma. So we track the the, the story and mm. the body right there. Some clients come because I want to have a tantra massage or an experience in, in secret sexuality because they want to open in flow. But immediately, I notice the body responses. So before anything else, I really track the body and I track the history. Because in the unconscious, you don't know you have had a, a sexual abuse. But as soon as I touch, the body contracts. Mm -hmm. Or the, 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 the breathing goes like this. And I say, no, there's something going on here. So you read very much the body, the responses, but also the energy, the relaxation, the breathing, allowing, because the longing has to come natural. So I also learned to recognize when this fear comes out of a new experience that is daring and I want to test my boundaries, I want to test, I can do this, this is resilience because I can do this for my sexual liberation. But then there's another part that the body is just evidently shutting down. So in my techniques, of course, I use, uh, it's like a rebalancing and tracking the nervous system first. Then you, op you relax the body and then I invite relaxation, breathing, and then, then I can do some work. But first, before touching the body, we need to make sure that the client is ready to open. And no pushing, yes. no pushing. In Norway, we have 
in the late years now we have been having lots of tantra groups going on mm. all over the place here and uh, some of them uh, looks like they're doing it most for pleasure uh, mm. do you have any comments about uh, what's going on i see that you you have more deep interest in this but these tantra workshops mm. uh, um, have you heard about people going to tantra workshops in Norway what uh, yes and I have several clients but of course we cannot we cannot be specific or generalized everybody has to go through their own experience uh, I went through tantra to find out more about myself and actually discovered that actually I had a very healthy boundaries even if they were f based on fear of connecting they were healthy because they keep me out of trouble okay and I, yeah <laughs> Yeah. So I said, okay, my survival mechanism supported me in protecting myself. Mm. But there are other per people who, or women in particular, that I notice um, in Europe, that they are very daring, very strong, and I'm going to do this, and I want to do that, and I'm going to show them I can do this, you know. Going very much into the fighting to make a stand, and which is very good for woman empowerment. However, we forget that the woman is extremely vulnerable, extremely fragile. And we need to go back to the receptive female to really catch ourselves in the what is protection for me, what is healthy, what is not healthy. Because there's no doubt that there are beautiful sexual beings. But how am I going to use my sexuality so that I respect my boundaries and I love myself and I attract that to my life? So in the Tantra world, yes, I have, I have uh, experienced several clients with sexual abuse, even in the, in the Tantra world where energetic boundaries get transgressed, but they don't know because they don't know what it is the boundary. So they, they cannot recognize it's an abuse. They just come with the side effect symptoms, totally disorganized, in panic, and they don't know because it's not something physical. Like, like, it hasn't been a penetration, but I feel sexually abused. What happened here? Well, we have to go and we have to then work with the body to liberate that energy and also work with the psychic and also work with the heart in reconstructing the whole spectrum of hair. Hmm. How do you work with the heart? With the heart. With the heart. Yeah. Well, we need to accept that we are fragile and that our heart is fragile, very, very fragile. So we connect with the qualities of the heart. So you work with, uh, you're talking about working in different dimensions. Yes. You have the yeah. psychological and you have the body and then you have the heart. Yeah. Is it any other dimensions? Yeah, I work with the womb and I have found that when I use the sexual eros energy in my workshops, for example, uh, I connect to this juice of life in connection to the heart and longings and desires so that the sex per se is not only but is heart and sex together. And I put it in the womb. And in the womb is the matrix, is the core of where we came here, is how we came here. It is the first seed who is formed in us, is the womb. So from that darkness, we go deep into the dark womb and we find out what happened there and we integrate sexual energy and the heart qualities in the womb. So we find out more about our history. But that's another story because it's also, I do a shamanic trip mm, there, okay. right? Yeah. And then, I, then it's a juice because I really like to put my shamanic and spiritual life into the reconnection of our ancestral lines. and. So it's a whole process of reconstruction after we go through this shock and trauma, pain. We go through the other side and then we start coming back as adults, taking responsibility, mm. taking care of a baby or a little girl or a little man and bring, bring them back in the world and integrate. Yeah. Why did you come to Norway? Well, <laughs> Norway, it's an interesting country. It's an interesting place to be. I just finished my, my degree in, um, in Denmark, who was very beautiful and transformative. And then I said, okay, then I'm ready to go to the, to the world. And I didn't know 
where to go. And I passed through Stockholm and I, I felt that the energy was very high intensity. And said, well, this is like Mexico City, it's not going to help my body to heal. And one day I just crossed through uh, Norway, I passed through Oslo, I was uh, walking around and I said, yeah, I think <laughs> I can live here. Yeah, it's, it's so calm and relaxed, that's what I need at the moment, you mm -hmm. know. It's like, yeah, let's give it a okay. chance because my body needs to rest after after so much crazy work I did to really find out because I always thought there was something wrong with me. Then you go and do and do and do until you, of course, the body needs to stop. So I put myself in this trial of, yeah, it's maybe it's boring enough. I stay here <laughs> and I land and I ground and I now need to ground myself and I need to rest and let the body totally digest my experiences. So. I let time for integration. And wow. also because I always liked Norway peace and human rights. And I thought those are two very strong qualities mm -hmm. in a country that I respect. And that's what I was looking, you know. But how are you looking at, um, I think you, you have been in Norway not very long, but you have some Norwegian clients. Yes. And you have experienced Norwegians. Mm -hmm. uh, how is Norwegians compared to, um, yeah, Mexicans or yeah. other countries. Very different. Oh my God, it's a polarity. It's a polarity. And actually, it triggered me very much in the beginning because after all this relaxation, I was trying to find out the, okay, now uh, we need to do something. Where is the people to do something? And then I start noticing that actually, yeah, I start noticing the conditioning is very different. So then I, my question was like, how can I meet them? out of my longing to connect, you know, I need to find my way. And then I noticed that, yeah, we, we are very different. In Mexico, we are in the body, we are in the emotions, we use the hands, we like to connect, we let the energy out, right? Yeah. And in Norway, no. Mm -hmm. Totally different. Totally mm -hmm. different. So I, that triggered me in the beginning. And then, now I know, but in the beginning, we're well, like, okay, how, <laughs> how am I going to do this? I need to find a way of connecting. Yeah. And then I said, okay, I need to understand where they are, where they come from, where is their pain? Because I saw a lot of people with a lot of fear, not having expressions in their face, contracted in the chest. Mm -hmm. You go to a cafe and the tone is very low, uh, sad. And it, it, it strikes me that people don't laugh very much or don't smile or don't look into your eyes. I said, what's happening here? There must be a way. There must be a way in. It's not possible. <laughs> they are beautiful, you know? So then I was trying to find out, okay, I need to, I need to find out my, my way in. So it's been a challenge, but I also see a lot of longing for Norwegian people who go and do a lot of work, a lot of trainings. The problem is that the condition, the cultural conditioning is very strong in every culture. Hmm. And I have been studying social conditioning in nine countries, and this is tough. Norwegian is tough. It's hard. Also, because we are conditions very. It's very strong, and uh, I think that difficult the, to get out of it. The weather also hmm. builds up your resistance to hold it, versus in Mexico with the the sun and the weather is like you let it out, yeah. let it out, right? Piña colada every day. Here it's like so cold that you just freeze, you know? So that doesn't help the opening, no. right? Mm. So you build up is your body. You resist a lot. You are strong. You are hard to break. So in order to crack hearts, oh my God, we need to do some work mm. there. But does, do you think Norwegians has more traumas than others? No, 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 no. It's just a different way of processing. Yeah. Every culture mm. uh, from life generations, we all have our traumas, our histories, the history, I mean, Mexico is a, a, a product of Spain and conquest, yeah? So we have our conditioning, we have our cultural shame that we are breaking free. If a woman express sexual desire, it's a prostitute, hmm. you know? Otherwise, it's a family uh, housewife. So we have things to work out in Mexico. There's a lot of pain, a lot of sexual abuse, immense. There's a lot of violence. 
but it's expressed very different as how I express it. In, I find it in Norway. It's more shut down, more in the closet. Sexual abuse is a lot. Aggression is a lot. A lot of passive aggression behaviors, but it's like locked. It's like the invernation in the winter in the house. Everything happens in the house, and nobody talks about it. Nobody dares to say anything. Nobody. So it's very hard for one person who actually is struggling to come out when has all the family members behind and mm -hmm. like, how can I break free? Something is happening and I cannot do anything. So they're going to freeze. And so the person who really dares to come out and liberate and do something about it needs to have a lot of support to break free. It's not a joke. Yeah. But th this is what uh, your line of work is, to support people yes. coming out. Yes. And I know you have been working in Norway now with some, uh, you take clients and you also have groups here yes. at Unity. Yes. Uh, but um, still it's very slow for you in Norway. Mm -hmm. I know it takes time to build up in Norway. If you come from a different culture, it yeah. things takes more time. Yeah, things take more time, considering that I, I knew very few people when I came here. It takes time, but I go slow. Yes, but I, I wish your your experience can come to use mm -hmm. in Norway. Mm -hmm. So I recommend people to go to her workshops and um, maybe contact you as a therapist. You are very welcome. Uh, we have talked about some things here. Is it things we haven't talked about that you would like to say something about? Um. I, I just feel that um, it's very nice and I really appreciate this opportunity to to express what I do and invite the people of Oslo, Norway to really uh, come and experience something different, uh, lose the fear of going for your inner liberation. It's hard, it's tough, but it's possible. And I can assure you that it's possible to feel your body to feel love, pleasure, connecting, reconnecting to life. And it is important to do your research and to find the right person to support you, someone who will contain you, to hold you and to be with you in your journey. And if for that, I really invite you to just try and see what happens. So that's my invitation. Yeah, I think that's a good uh, ending. Usually we'd say you have a Message to the world. You want to say something to the world? Message to the world is like, oh my God, there's so much, but it's like uh, inner peace and love, compassion, kindness, be gentle with oneself and do our inner work, take responsibility to make this world a little bit better. So that when we leave this body, it's a little bit better of how we found it. That's that's my goal. That's a good one. Yeah, it, at least uh, yeah. I will not <laughs> contribute for more, but to support the maintenance and sustainability of this world. And I think that the inner work is important to communicate yes. and, and to heal. Yeah. And uh, sexual shock and trauma is in every part of the world. We are really um, putting our effort to liberate that because when we liberate ourselves, we can love more. And when we love, there's more peace and it's like the chain of reaction, you know, and I mean Unity Center is full of beautiful therapists who also believe in in uh, something better, brighter and loving. Yes. So we all work in through the same cause, it's just that we all use different methods, and, uh, but we work toward the same goal and objective of love and peace for everybody and, and do the best. So. Thank you very much. Thank you very this much. This is... Um, Thank you. This is an opportunity for you to, to, if you want to get in contact with uh, Uma, I'll, right here, I'll put her mail address. Yes. Uh, I think mail address is the best Mail address, thing. Put yes. it down here, then uh, you can contact her if you yes. like, and look at Unity's arrangement page, we'll see her next arrangement here. Yes. So, thank yes. you very much, Uma. Thank it you very much. It was very interesting. Thank you very much. I hope to see you, even in private. Uh, consultation or in groups or in my womb uh, workshops uh, I'm creating different kind of ideas so that I can invite you to mobilize yourselves and go for more and take the best of your life so thank you very much thank you thank you mm -hmm.